Welcome everybody uh, to another interview I have on my channel after talking to Norman from ToonTrack. Um, I, uh, I feel very honored to welcome Josh Cameron uh, on my channel. Uh, welcome Josh, uh, it's a great honor and appreciate that you find the time to talk to me. Oh, thank you. It's, it's great to actually talk to you with, with faces and stuff. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, so just, uh, just for um, if there's anyone who uh, doesn't know you, um, I doubt that there's anyone out there watching my channel who does not know you. Just give a kind of a brief introduction of you yourself, like uh, what you're doing um, about your channel, how old are you, where you live and stuff like that. Okay, so for you, that, for you guys that don't know me, uh, my name's Josh. I'm 19 years old and I'm based in London, UK, so England. Um, I've been playing drums for about 11 years and my channel is basically um, just drum covers and tutorials and hopefully more sort of vloggy style videos, up and coming sort of thing. Um, and I've been making videos since 2012, so I think I've got about 90 videos on my channel now. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, obviously I'm inclined to say subscribe please, it's Josh Cameron Drums. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Um, I really love your channel. I've been watching it for quite some years now um, because like uh, I was um, back in the days, I was looking for cool drum covers and like uh, guys using electronic drums. And this is what you do, right? Like uh, you're not yeah. playing acoustically, you're playing e-drums, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I play electronic drums in my covers for, for a number of reasons. Number one, to completely disclo disclose a sort of idea that electronic drums are bad. They're not bad. They're getting a lot better now. Um, secondly, because it's a lot easier to record with. Um, I don't have the budget or the time or the funds to go to a studio and get it all professionally mixed and recorded and stuff. So using electronic drums and learning how to do it myself has always been the way that I've done it. Um, and it works great. I mean, now my videos are starting to get to the to the quality I want them to be at, and then, you know, they're, they're forever improving. So if you watch the first video I did, which was on a TD3, a Roland TD3, compared to now my drum tech Diablo kit, with a TD30, it's got a lot better. <laughs> so. Yeah, I just saw that uh, today when I did some research on your channel. Um, uh, it was, wow, uh, it's like left ear and that's it. <laughs> yeah, but well, uh, well, for me, it's like always great to see like the uh, involvement of a, of a, like a person uh, and that you will still allow that the old videos are still available on YouTube. Um, yeah. I know a lot of guys like just deleting um, all the, the, the former stuff. Um, yeah. But you like you really see like the improvement over time, which is like pretty normal and common for like someone playing an instrument, right? Like getting yeah. better over time. So um, just back to you once again. You um, you um, you play in a band as well, so you play acoustic drums as well, right? Yeah, I mean I play for a, a few artists, bands at the moment. Um, so do I do the function stuff? So covers work. Um, play for a guy called Ralph Taylor. We did loads of festivals this year, and as of late, I was playing for a band called Finding Kate as well. Um, yeah, so I do a lot of live playing and recording as well. It's not just YouTube stuff that I do. Um, <laughs> so I see uh, you have uh, almost three thousand subscribers, which is pretty good. Um, like, tell me when you started back in the day. You were quite, you are nineteen. You just said like so. You started uh, five years ago, so you were fourteen, right? Um, um, and I remember like most of the channels, including myself, just started uh, like within the last two or three years. So back in the days, there were not so many guys out there doing drum covers on YouTube, which is um, getting more and more, more popular, um, as you see. So just tell me what inspired you back in the days to start this. Was there a kind of a role model that you saw or just wanted to uh, to show the world your, your drumming skills? So what like inspired and motivated you to start that channel? Oh, basically back in, uh, what was it? I think it was, it was back in the summer of 2012. I was, uh, I was selected among a young pool of session musicians, like a young group of musicians to play. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys know the Olympics, the Olympic torch relay. So when the Olympic torch gets carried around all of the towns and cities. So for London 2012, it was carried around the town, which I used to live at. And I was chose to play at that festival, uh, at, that, oh, at that sort of thing. So it's 25,000 people were there. I think CNN were broadcasting it. It was, it was a big deal. Fantastic. Um, so I remember back then being 14 years old, I loved it. And I was like, I want to carry on doing this. I want to carry on improving. And that was when for me, like my drumming started to get really serious. I was like, I really want to start doing this properly. 
And then about a month later, I, I started making videos. I literally just thought, okay, okay we we had a, a handy recorder sort of thing, just a normal video camera at home. We had a Mac at home that, that the family owned, and um, I had a brother who could hold that camera for me whilst I played <laughs> drums. So it, it, it started off like that. And then I didn't know how, how I was, you know, like how, how to do it. I didn't know what I was doing. So I used to just record Garage Band and then just plug a jack into my module and then a jack into the back of my my computer and recording as a garage band. <laughs> um, it was all mono, so I was all in the left ear. It was it, it, it was really really terrible. But um, as time went on, I saw I saw myself improving both drumming wise and production wise, both in the audio and the video. Started to invest in more cameras, in better lighting, in better drums. And then um, you know as as time's gone on, I mean even even though I mean five years and I've already got three thousand subscribers almost, it doesn't seem like much. But for me, it was never about that. It's only just started to become about the subscribers. But beforehand, it was more so just about me having a sort of diary to sort of keep hold of where I was three years ago to where I am now, where I where I was you know two years ago to where I am now. And um, for me, it's really important to see progression. So like Mike said, like there's a lot of guys that do just delete their content. I mean, I have deleted a few videos, but I've still got <laughs> the really important bad ones on there. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, so what is like, um, what do you would, or uh, in other words, when someone's like gonna start a YouTube channel, what's, is there a kind of an advice you would give? like? what people should stick to, concentrate on video quality, audio quality, on like fancy drumming, doing like, you know, like rush or like fancy metal drumming. So what, what do you like as a drummer, as a musician and a YouTuber, what would you recommend people starting a channel nowadays? Um, part of me wants to go towards the sort of businessy and view side and say only cover popular songs because that's what's going to get views right. at the end of the day when you make a youtube video there's thousands upon thousands being uploaded every single day yeah. so you need to make sure that your your content is number one really really good quality like you said video and audio is really good quality number two to make sure that the um the song that you're doing is appropriate i.e let's say a new i don't know jesse J song or justin bieber song that just came out and it's really really popular You'll, you'll automatically rack quite a few views because people are already searching for it. Um, number three, I would pay close attention to what something called metadata, which is essentially the text surrounding your video. Right. Because companies like Google, YouTube, Facebook, etc., they can't watch your videos for you. They they rely on keywords and text surrounding your content to understand what it's about and help to sort of distribute it to the people that are interested. So never write a description that is this is my drum cover of this. <laughs> that's that's not going to get you anywhere. Like I mean, if if you guys see read my descriptions, normally I make it a conversation. I'll say this is what I've been doing recently. I did this because of that. If you guys liked it, please do this. And then I make my keywords as long as they can be, all my tags and stuff. And I mean, yeah, I'm 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 not getting millions and millions of views, but the stuff that I do, I I enjoy doing. Um, and I think that it's important to do that. I mean, like there's guys that are like Luke Holland and Matt McGuire and. Cooper drummer and stuff, and they're backed by so many great companies, and they're doing fantastically. Like, well done to them. Man. But it's 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 different at this point. So don't ever sort of sit there and think you need to be aiming for that straight away. You need to sort of work yourself up to a point where you're comfortable in your own content and what you're doing, and then from there start to think about the bigger picture. So like I'm now at the point where I'm starting to aim a little bit higher with better video quality, better audio quality. I'm taking more time with the content and stuff. But to start off with, you just need to have fun with it. That's what I'd really say. It, um, it, it needs to be enjoyable. Otherwise, you'll lose um, you'll lose your connection. You won't want to do it. It'll become a chore. You don't really want to like look at it like it's work. It needs to be fun. Does, does, does that make sense? Gotcha. That sense. Yeah, gotcha, yeah. totally. So, um, yeah. like when we had like uh, kind of the preparation talk uh, b right before the interview for all the listeners and watch reviews out there, of course, I'm going to talk to you to just like before we record uh, hit the record button uh, like you uh, you said something interesting that you like uh, have a um, kind of you described your channel as um, showing the people of the world that electronic drums uh, can sound and can look um, high quality and 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 like kind of um, um, adorable in terms of because you uh, have the feeling that people 
connect e-drums with like sloppy sounds or like plastic sounds and bad looking so um this is something like um i just, I just repeated that but maybe in your own words what about the, the goal of your channel is that really like one of them of course beside your own drumming and like getting more popular as a person as a drummer but like this is kind of a, um, a second goal for you right like providing the quality of e-drums yeah yeah of course i mean nowadays especially in london and everywhere else houses are getting smaller space is getting smaller the amount of noise you can make is becoming you know a lot less now um like no one has like well not many people have loads of space out in the middle of nowhere in a field and they can have a massive drum kit so that with loads of really decent mics and stuff um and electronic drums nowadays are getting to the point now where they're starting to look great they're starting to feel great and they're starting to become authentic instruments in themselves i mean everyone knows that electronic drums are essentially trying to mimic what an acoustic drum does right however there's still some massive positives to electronic drums that acoustic can't give you for example drum tuning i know that there's many people out there that can't tune drums believe me right. because i'm at a music store there's so many people that just don't know what they're doing when it comes to tuning drums And obviously when you're recording a drum that's not in tune, it's going to sound rubbish on the outset because it's, it doesn't sound good when it's not being recorded, let alone when it's being recorded. No matter how many, you know, like uh, different audio editing things you do to it, how much you EQ it, compress it or whatever, like it's still going to be a bad starting point. Um, whereas electronic drums, especially now with uh, things like uh, Superior Drummer, Addictive Drummer, Stephen Slate, um, you can get authentic, real drum sounds that sound fantastic because they've had the best producers work on them, they've had the best mics, the best studios in the world, all given to you in one software package. And for me, that's like the complete, like, I, I, I guess, the best thing for any drummer that doesn't want to spend loads of money or can't spend loads of money or doesn't have the time or, you know, and any of that stuff. Um, so for me and my channel, it's, it's about showing everyone that, Just because they're electronic drums doesn't mean it's going to be bad. Um, now with my drum tech kit and now I've moved house and stuff, I, I'm starting to see that my videos are starting to look good. I mean, I like I like the way they're starting to look. And um, people are like will click on the thumbnail and they go, oh, it's an electronic drum kit, it's going to sound horrible. And then when they hear it, it sounds really good. Like, oh, this actually sounds amazing. How are you getting that sound? And it, and, and it gives me great pleasure to say, Yes, it is good. This is what electronic drums are nowadays. Because back in the day, when you had your hexagonal pads by Simmons and stuff, <laughs> that was bad. But now, you know, Roland are doing amazing. Uh, Superior Drum has now released the, yeah. their third edition, which I've still not got yet, by the way. Sorry to interrupt. You, you, sh you should. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. yeah I've, I've, I've had every intention of upgrading. It's just, um, you know, finding the time to probably sit down look at the upgrade, look at what it gives me and then learn it. I mean, ask Mike, he, like, I, it took me ages to learn Superior Drummer 2. So, so Toontrack, when you're watching this, like, get this guy a copy of Superior Drummer 3, so. I've already got some number two, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, great. Um, so um, because uh, we are now like really diving into this topic, um, because um, I wanted to talk to you as you are, you are a drummer, a musician, you work at a music dealer. So you you talked about the tuning aspect as well, uh, which like in my experience, um, I can really highly agree. Uh, like uh, it doesn't like even if you buy a great use a custom right, if you don't tune it properly, uh, it will sound terrible. Right. Yeah. So um, Like talking like from a musician musician's perspective, I when I talk to drummers or musicians, especially those who still don't like e drums, they always say something like, "I cannot express myself on an e drum," um, and I always respond like, "Probably uh, because you just like played an e drum uh, one time like 15 years ago, like an old TD like what well, I know TD3 or stuff, and they never get to play like the modern TD30 stuff, uh, triggering superior drummer. So um, as you are a really talented drummer, like working in a band, playing acoustically, uh, what about the, um, the aspect of expressing yourself? Do you feel uh, like kind of um, restrained or limited when playing on an electronic drums? Um. I don't feel restrained. I don't feel restricted. I don't feel like it limits what I can do. And if it has at any point limited what I can do, 
I read something, I read how to make the hi-hat settings better, how to make the snare more sensitive, or change the sensitivity. Or watch, um, my, ch watch my channel for that, right? Exactly, and you can watch my channel because he's got all that stuff on there. So basically, <laughs> when, when I'm not feeling good behind the kit, I go to Mike's channel and then he shows me what to do. Um, but, <laughs> but no, it's, um, it, okay, this, is, this will probably be the best way to answer this question. I've had four of my absolute best friends, absolute drummer friends, come around to my house and play my drum tech kit and my Jabeki kit for that matter as well. Um, and after they took took out their inner ears and like looked at me, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! This is fantastic!" Because they've never been exposed to it before. They they didn't know it, um, like that sort of thing existed. So for those guys who are all gigging musicians as well, they're all very good drummers. For them to sit down behind my kit and say the same thing that I am just shows that I'm not biased. It's not me saying it because I can only play electronic drums on my channel. It is genuinely a very, very, very good um, instrument nowadays. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's mutually agreed with a lot of people over here in London. Uh, I, I don't know where your fan base is, is sort of set out. Hopefully there's some people in London. Mine, so. mine uh, but, but I think it's 80% United States, like really? for some reasons, yeah. Great. Well, if you're in the US, why you going to London? Come meet up with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it surprises me as well due to my sloppy German accent. So, but anyway, um, you talked yes. about you talked about drum tech uh, already. Um, you're like for some months now. You are uh, you play a drum track kit. Uh, so um, um, I know them quite well because they are based here in Germany uh, and went to their um, to their shops sometimes. It's a great experience for everyone out there. If you come to Germany, uh, make sure you visit one of their stores. Amazing experience. Um, talk about like your decision to um, choose Drum Tech um, as your new p kind of partner. What's like? What about Drum Tech? The quality and your experience with uh, with the brand. Uh, so. I I knew Drum Tech before I knew any other electronic drum company apart from Roland and Yamaha and Alesis. They were the first company that I knew. I'm, 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 I knew them before Trebeki, I knew them before um, Diamond Drums, which is another UK-based one. I knew them before all those guys. And um, I, I remember sitting there when I was, I don't know, it must have been about, I guess, 12, 13 years old. Like, there's quite a while ago now. Um, and I remember seeing one of their kits, and I was like, wow. That's amazing, like a German-made electronic drum kit. That must be like the best thing ever. And then I looked at the price tag, and for me, as a 13-year-old, I couldn't of afford course. it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 13 years old. I've got 10 pounds. That's, <laughs> that's pocket money, you know. Um, and I'd, I, I'd always loved the look of drum tech. I never played a drum tech kit until I actually got my drum tech kit from oh, okay. drum tech themselves. So I, I had no experience playing them. However, I'd heard so many great things about them. I mean, if you guys know Marcel Price from V Drum Tips, yep. um, you, you can ask him as well because he he always says really really good things about Drum Tech and like their triggering systems and stuff. But when I got in contact with Drum Tech, when they contacted me, when we started talking and stuff, and they said, "Look, we want you to play Drum Tech drums. We want you to you know use our drums on your channel." I was like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was it was drum tech con contacting you, not the other way around. Uh, if, if I remember correctly, that's 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 what happened. Yeah, because right. I, I I'd spoke to drum tech previously, like they they knew what I was doing, and I knew them from a long time ago. And then when we sort of connected, I think don't don't quote me on this. <laughs> I think it was drum tech which said this is like we can offer you this sort of. Great. And um, obviously for me it was a no-brainer because like they have been the sort of like for me they are like the DW of of electronic drums they are like you know the the, the best guys out there um, and then you know, I mean talking to the guys at, at drum tech was great and um, yeah so so you're satis you satisfied uh, with the drum obviously yeah, right yeah, yeah I mean. I remember when I first got my kit, so th th this is a good story, right? So, <laughs> I was, <laughs> my girlfriend's gonna hate me, so I'm, I was I was on a date with another girl at, at, at this time. Like I, was, I, I was in the cinema, I was watching a film with this other girl, and I got a message on my phone from my brother saying, your new, uh, your new kit has arrived from Drum Tech. And I was like, what? That's like four days earlier, I wasn't expecting it then. So I left the date 
<laughs> yes, that was uh, <laughs> something I wanted to hear. Great. You so, are you are a real drummer, Josh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I mean, it, it's 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 actually really embarrassing, but yeah. So I left the day. I went home. I saw that like that there were like four or five massive boxes, all of German labels, and I was like, yes, this is my new kit. Um, and then that night, unfortunately, so I got home about I think it was about. 3.34 p.m. Oh. And then I had work at 6 at a pub I used to work at. Um, so I had to go do a, do a bar job. So it meant that I only had like two hours to sort of see the drums, <laughs> get them set up, and then go to work. So I didn't actually get a chance to properly set them up. So I started to. I, I got them out of the boxes, like, wow, did the, little, like, the start of the unboxing video I did beforehand. Um, and then when I got back home, I carried on until like, I think about 3 a.m., 4 a.m. <laughs> I'm, I'm still un I'm unboxing the drums. Um, and then the next day when I sat behind them, like bearing in mind, it was a considerably bigger setup than my old Jebeki kicks. I had just say 10 and 14 and a 20 inch kit. But now I've got like, two rack toms, two floor toms, and then like more cymbals. So I sat behind it and I was like, wow, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was amazing. So yeah, I mean, it, it, it was good fun. It was good fun. It was like a good day. It was a great, a great story, uh, honestly. Yeah. Um, so, and you um, you play Roland cymbals again uh, with the Roland TD30. Um, yeah. um, again, speaking as someone selling drums um, as well, um, you know, there are so many manufacturers out there, but like at least for me, when it comes to cymbals, Roland are still kind of benchmark, right? In terms of yeah. triggering response and stuff like that. I yeah. sometimes feel it's kind of a shame because I I, I would like um, to see maybe something different, but but from my experience, no manufacturer really can like fit or match the quality of Roland when it comes to overall quality, durability, and triggering response, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, um, something which was was really really apparent for me when I switched but switched from Jabeki to drum tech and getting the VH thirteen MG hi hats. They are the best electronic hi hats out there. I don't care what anyone says, they are the best. Just hands down, full stop. Yeah. Um, when I got them and plugged them into the T thirty, like the amount of response in velocity from being closed to slightly open to even more open to completely, you know, like wide washed, open. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wide open. Was was absolutely fantastic, and same same with the uh, the ride, the, the three zone ride is absolutely fantastic. And if you guys haven't already done so, I'd recommend you go to your nearest music retailer and check out the TD50 <laughs> because the ride on that is absolutely incredible. It's absolutely it's, stunning. Yeah, yeah. Play that a drum tech basically. Yeah, yeah. It, fantastic. It, it, it is so so good. I mean, because because on the 50 they now have USB powered. Pads. It's the uh, the 14 inch snare drum and the 18 inch ride cymbal. Right. So what that means is the USB connection has more pins than a normal jack connection does. So you can send more signals down one line, which means that you can uh, like it's it's touch sensitive. So you can like hit the ride and then just press it with your hand and it and it will mute. Um, you can choke it with your stick. You can do all that sort of stuff. And then same with snare drum. It's got positional sensing. From like out, out like by the rims of the drum into the center, it's really, really, really incredibly sort of responsive. And of course, with the USB powered uh, pads, there's no latency, so it's completely out. When you hit it, you're getting the sound. And going on to latency, really quick. <laughs> yeah, of course. The reason why Roland are the best in terms of uh, the modules and all. All that sort of thing, because they have the lowest latency. I think low, uh, Lowland. I think Roland are around <laughs> two point four milliseconds in latency, which yeah. is inaudible to the human ear. And Alesis, I think around twelve point eight. If I may be wrong in the figures, but it's around the sort of twelve to thirteen milliseconds, which means that with Alesis, you're hearing the pad before you hear the sound. Yeah. Now. And that's bad. And that's bad. I mean, I've, I've, I've played the Strike Pro, and I'm sorry if you know there's any Alesis fans or anyone from Alesis watching this, but it's terrible. I, I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I mean, like, um, I got a lot of questions, uh, probably no, and Marcel, I, I mean, I talked to Marcel uh, Price from V-Drum Tips, um, yeah. and uh, Justin Greenwald from 65 Drums, uh, of course. Um, Love his channel as well. Yeah, um, me uh, too. Um, <laughs> and um, when you talk to them, like, they get, like, 
tons and tons of questions regarding like latency and like setting up um, a drum module, especially in combination with something like Superior Drummer. Uh, I mean, this is like one of the reasons my channel exists um, at first, uh, um, because like people, and I, I have to admit, like it is complex, especially when you're not kind of like when you're a newbie, when you're starting, uh, just like, because people tend or like, would like to just switch on like the module and instantly start to play but like getting even like the TD30 and TD50 set up correctly especially in a, with a complex software like Superior Drama because it is complex uh, when you look at it um, but once you like set it set it up like the right way it's like an incredible experience um, because yeah. like Superior Drama especially 3 really supports all those subtleties that a Roland module provides you basically like with the different yeah. zones on the snare and the right symbol so but um, and because this leads me to my next question uh, again from your experience um, well, my daily experience with people buying electronic drums so like when you describe like the typical first time electronic drum buyer um if like if there's something like do you like are there like more drummers that like want to buy electronic drums as a second kit or uh, uh, is there a more like newbies like new to drumming that just want to start drumming and just can afford or want to afford an electronic drum set is there kind of a typical drum electronic drum buyer from your experience um i think both of the customers that you described are both both very sort of um, gets relevant. You get a lot of people coming into like drum shops and stuff, and they 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 they've either been playing drums for a number of months, and they they realise that their beginner drum kit that's that's acoustic and that has the worst cymbals and the worst heads sounds terrible and it's too loud <laughs> for the neighbours, and like we need to change something about this. And then in that case, I'll get something like a, a TD11 KV where it's got the mesh heads, mm. a decent a module, or for those that are sort of like, like you said, a drummer that has an acoustic kit and wants an electronic kit for a, a, a practice or a second kit, they normally lean towards the TD25 um, because it sort of gives itself more to the, um, I guess, a more experienced mm. drummer. Um, but yeah, I mean... I sell more electronic drum kits day in, day out than I do acoustic kits. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So in the last month, I've sold probably about 16 or 17 rolling kits, um, which which is quite a lot. I mean, yeah, I'd say probably in the last two months, actually. And that's like TD1s, uh, TD11 KVs, TD25 Ks and KVs. Um, someone bought a TD50 really recently uh, from our store. Um, so electronic drums nowadays are definitely becoming pro probably the best home practice tool. A lot of people buy them because they want to practice at home because of neighbors and stuff. Yeah. However, there's still uh, there's still customers that come in and, and they get SPD ones and SPD um, SXs and other pads to play live and use like hybrid setups. Which like is cool. Which is cool, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. I mean, I use an SPD SX live with uh, with Ralph, so I trigger all our backing tracks, all our click it. Uh, all, all our clicks, I do clap sounds, um, like sort of 80s tom sounds, like everything like that. Well, that would be basically, that would be, if you think about it, uh, a great topic to um, do a kind of a um, tutorial. Um, because I just I recently talked to Justin Grima from 65 Drums on, on Facebook. Um, because like he's he's covering like a lot of topics regarding e drums, and I feel like uh, and he asked me like um, if there was something I would be interested in, and we talked about like possible topics for him to cover or like doing like um, vlogs and tutorials, and I I, I felt like especially this hybrid topic um, is like because more and more acoustic drummers are like digging into electronic drums, but they don't yeah. want to give up like their acoustic drums due to the feel, of course, and like the, the looks basically. Um, so, uh, but it's really complex how to set up like uh, using an SPD, SX, stuff like that into your acoustic drumming, uh, like what you can do without it, just like you said, like triggering like loops and samples or even yeah. a click track and stuff. So this would be a nice topic to, to cover maybe. Like just for yeah. an idea for your channel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. I mean, if, if, if you guys are interested in seeing that, then what what I'd love to do is I love to. I mean, uh, have, have you guys heard of a band called Top Loader? I don't know. Top Loader is that the name? I think that's the name. But basically, we're supporting them. Apparently, they're quite big. Or is it Star Sailor? 
one of those ones like bands yeah yeah anyway <laughs> yeah so basically we have a show coming up in november with them uh, supporting them so it'll be cool if you guys want to see it i could do a sort of behind the scenes things like me setting up the spd live how it goes into the desk and how it's all you know going through the speakers and stuff how i use it live and stuff because obviously it changes your drumming completely when you like playing acoustic drums or electronic drums without any other like samples or triggers going on it's very different to thinking i need to be triggering this click for that song i need to be doing that at this point mm -hmm. because um especially with ralph taylor there's a lot of songs which are really really driven by what i'm doing on the spd um so if i miss a particular let's say sample or like there's the second verse or going into the chorus and stuff the song loses everything because we have sub bass yep. in there we have backing tracks and it disappears <laughs> it starts to sound really empty so um yeah i mean that would be something that, that i'd be interested in making only if you guys want to see it though, so yeah great um, talking about your bands, um, I've just like um, um, I, I know some you do have, they did some music for Finding Kate. I think this was the name of the band. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't play with them anymore, right? No, I don't play Finding Kate anymore. No. But but I just like I really love the music you guys did. Um, just like because I I was curious about the name um, and I just wanted to know who the hell is Kate, and who wants <laughs> and who wants to find her. So, so Kate is a uh, she's she's Austro Cypriot Austria. Yeah. Basically, she's got an Australian. She's got I think I think her dad's Australian and her mum is from Cyprus. Please, Kate, will sorry if, I, if I'm wrong, um, but yeah. So she's Australian and Cypriot. Um, she also lives in London. Uh, she's the lead singer of the band. That's why it's called Finding Kate. Oh, okay. Um, she's Kate. Yeah. Yeah, she, she she is Kate, but 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 essentially when when they were naming the band according to them, because it's before before I was even involved in the project, um, they had her name on a piece of paper, Kate, and then they had loads of words before it, and then they were sort of going through the different words like finding Kate, uh, seeing Kate, whatever, 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 and 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 then they came down to that one. And I was like, okay, that one sounds the best. Um, so that's that's what that band's called Finding Kate and Kate is a very 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 good singer um, the whole Finding Kate band is uh, sort of run by her and a guy called Chris who is a Cypria um, producer he, he, he has his own studios in Cyprus called Soundscape uh, which is probably the biggest and the best in Cyprus um, it's a, he, he is a fantastic producer he's got a lot of knowledge um, and like her, her debut her first album was all produced by him and co-written by him so yeah, I mean, they're cool. they're good guys. They're good. So I'm glad we uh, could solve this um, question that was yeah. out in the world about founding yeah. Kate. Uh, just going back, like to um, to your channel, um, because we talked about we started uh, this interview about your channel and your goals about this channel. I was interested, and in, because like you are just 19, um, um, you. You play in a band, you work um, at a music store, um, but you do your YouTube channel as well. So is this kind of like, because we live in 2017 right now, so is this kind of like a, a kind of a common marketing thing going on, like being a musician that you have to like present yourself in many different ways. I know, I know a lot of drummers, especially on YouTube, um, like having Spotify, Twitter, uh, and on Facebook uh, accounts, um, YouTube. So is this like something like you would kind of like, is this kind of normal for being a musician nowadays to use as many channels um, as they're uh, possible are? Um, I mean, I want to say it was normal because there's still a lot of young musicians and musicians trying to break out into the scene that don't do it. But I would say it's completely 100% um, needed. Like it's so essential. Okay. Um, back five, six, seven years ago, when Facebook wasn't as big, when YouTube wasn't as big, um, you could go out and you could gig in your local area. You yep. could do the circuit of gigs, and then you could make a name for yourself in your in, in your hometown or your home city. And then from there, you sort of build on your fan base going on from there. Whereas nowadays, people. I'm, I'm sorry to say this to anyone that's not, not started gigging yet, but live music is dying. Um, 
the the amount of people going to live gigs is considerably less because I mean now bands like Coldplay are doing virtual reality, so you can have a virtual reality and be at the gig exactly te- yeah. technically whilst you're sitting at home in your pants in your underwear. You know? <laughs> so so it's 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 almost a bit of a dying sort of thing to do by itself. I'm yeah. not saying it's dying completely, but I'm saying you need to implement it with other things. It's a dying art form, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so for me, like. It, Most of my work, like I've I've played in Milan with a producer called Compensation Os Florence Milan. I've played in Cyprus with a band called Distant Bonds. That's the most recent thing I did, like in terms of overseas. And um, I've played for many artists in London and UK and you know surrounding areas, etc. And that's all been from YouTube. Um, okay. So, mar- so yeah, so like marketing yourself online is probably the most important thing to do as a musician, as a band, as a personality, as anything. Um, and people that don't you know, see that and don't sort of switch on the 21st century mindset are going to suffer because most people nowadays are going to sit at home, they're going to get their phones and be scrolling through Facebook. And then if they see you on there, great. If they don't, then they're probably not going to ever hear of you. Exactly. Uh, Especially as YouTube uh, is like the second largest search engine in the world after Google. So, yeah, exactly. So people are like looking for everything like Uh, whether to uh, cook pasta or like to watch a drum covers like they're looking up on YouTube, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, the, the difference with Facebook and YouTube, this is why you should do both, by the way, yeah. is Facebook, basically, Facebook gets all of its traffic from Facebook. Right. People are already on Facebook and then when you scroll past, you'll be redirected to another page or it's your page and our artist page. There's ad sponsored adverts, etc. It's all on one website. Whereas on YouTube, which is owned by Google, I think, yeah. am I right saying that? Yeah, yeah it's right. Yeah. Um, the way it works, again, going back to metadata and stuff, is if someone types in, I don't know, how to tie a shoelace on Google, <laughs> chance of the top search result is going to be a YouTube video. So Google and YouTube work hand in hand because you can actually uh, redirect traffic from Google to YouTube and vice versa from YouTube to Google. Exactly. So, so YouTube is very different and a lot, a lot harder. I'm, I'm gonna add this. It's a, it's a lot harder to, um, to drum up interest on YouTube because you need to make yourself present on other social medias. You can't just sort of stand alone on YouTube and think that just making one video every single week is gonna, you know, cut it sort of thing. Um, it, it, it's hard. It, It's it's very hard. I mean, like like Mike said before, like you guys probably already know, I've only got like 3,000 subscribers in five years. That's really not that many. And Mike's now on the rise. He's probably going to overtake me very very soon. I know that um, Marcel has now he's like now over 10,000. I know that Justin has now got over 10,000 and stuff. So these guys are all going up because they're all doing relevant topics. They're all making videos which are you know wanted. Whereas for me, I've just been doing drum covers. Not like no one's asking for drum covers. No one's demanding them. I'm just doing them because it makes me happy. And I mean, I mean, I look at Cooper, a Cooper drummer, right? Yeah, I mean, the 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 guy's got what, what 1.2 million something like that. Yeah. yeah, And they're incredibly rich in the meantime. YouTube, <sighs> YouTube, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but you, <are>, you <laughs> I mean, you're still young, so um, so which leads me another to to the one of the last questions, basically. Um, You've done like so many things um, already in the last like one or two years, especially like really uh, increasing all the effort you put into your work and you're doing so much different th- things. Looking at your like digital career kind of, is there some, are there some goals like people can maybe um, look forward to? Is there something uh, special you plan for the next month? Are there some goals you want to achieve? Like, you know, uh, like getting from uh, a, a pro S series from drum tech, maybe, <laughs> uh, or like move, it's like doing yes, please, drum tech. I will take a pro S series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, now, uh, well, seriously, uh, seriously, is there like something y- you plan like within the next months? Uh, I know you are quite busy uh, in terms of your working and all the things you do with your bands and stuff. Um, but looking to your YouTube channel, is there like tell us about your plans? Okay, so I've recently started to focus my efforts on another passion of mine, which is videography and video editing. Oh, cool. So I'm I'm like. One of my favorite parts of making a video is editing 
and that might sound really weird because it's like, oh, you know, now I've got to go and edit it and then upload it. For me, that's like, yeah, let's do it. Like, I, I, so for me, it's the exact same. And um, I've recently selling, like, I've, I've recently been selling off all of my camera equipment, all my GoPros and stuff, um, because I'm about to invest a lot more in better cameras and better lighting and getting LED lighting and um, making my 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 video production value a lot higher. Mm-hmm. And then from there, what I'm going to do is hopefully on my YouTube channel, it's, become, it's be going to become a little bit more of a, in, in my eyes, it's become a, a little bit more of a lifestyle channel where it will have drum covers, it will have tutorials, it will have vlogs, it will have um, little show reels. Like let's say I, I had a day on the beach and I wanted to edit it and have it like really, really cinematic and look really nice. Um, I, I want to do a lot more of that sort of things. Um, I, I mean, I know that I've been saying for years that I've started doing tutorials because there's like certain parts in my covers where like there's like uh, you know s- certain licks or certain things where I go between like the stack and the hi hats and I do you know like maybe implied metric modulation like so some some weird nerdy drumming stuff and like people always say can you can you transcribe that can you send me the link can you teach me that is is, is where I can do that and I genuinely do want to start doing that but in front of the camera I'm quite awkward still um, I find it really hard to talk to the camera and like even though it may not seem like it. I like gen- genuinely. There's been times where I've sat there for three hours and gone, "Hello, my name's John." <laughs> no, I wasn't right again. <laughs> Hi, I'm. Uh, it's, so, so making myself do it is is has has been really hard. But I would like to do a lot more sort of talky videos, a lot more behind the scenes stuff. I mean, videos that Mike, um, like what you make, and you know, um, people like Marcel and Justin, like where you just sit and you talk and you explain things. It's interesting and it lasts a long time and it's intellectual and it's educating. And I feel that my channel is not very educating. It's just, this is me, take it or leave it. And I really want my channel to be more educational. Um, so I guess in the next few months, I'll be making it a little bit more educational. Yeah, Question. yeah, another one. It's just like, um, I found myself like, um, I, 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 like I, because this interview is not about me, basically it's about you, but um, I make good experience like just asking like the people what they want to see because yeah. uh, like yeah. from a because I, I I was working as a journalist for for a long time and like and now I'm 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 doing in marketing and like one of the main aspects of doing this job is to just concentrate on focus on the people's interest and not your own interests. Yeah. I mean I mean there there is a reason that uh, like uh, because the same way you do do and I did like in the past just doing. You know, I made some covers like that barely hit the 300 views because like no one in the world is looking for that song uh, to do a drum cover. But like when you want to grow and this is what like Justin and Marcel really um, is like do- doing well because they they just look for topics people are interested in and then do a tutorial about that. Um, yeah. And just like and, and the best way and the most direct way uh, as an interaction between, between people is just to ask them what you guys want to know from me, what you guys want you uh, want uh, want me to show you, um, because this is like an, an honest feedback directly from your subscribers and they will appreciate that. Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, uh, like in, in, in my descriptions, I always tell you guys, if, if any of you are watching this, uh, to, to comment, to like, to just to get in touch. Whether you say, hey, Josh, how are you doing? Or, hey, Josh, didn't really like this one. I prefer this old one. Like, like anything for me is progress. So even if you said I don't like the way I like, like for example, my, my last my last cover, a lot of people have said that the drums were too quiet in the mix because it's a drum cover. It's not, but but the way it was mixed was with the mindset that it was going to be a mastered song. So it was meant to sit in the song. Yep. So I've, I've taken that, and then the next cover, which I filmed today, by the way, so that'll be coming out quite soon, hopefully. Um, yeah, so the, the, the next one I've done is hopefully going to be mixed where the drums are slightly higher in the mix, it's slightly louder. So, so, so things like that. And then if you do, like, genuinely, if you do want to learn something that I play, or if you're interested in anything, like, even if it's, like, nerdy, like, you know, well... <sighs> What's your sort of tr- uh, cross trigger setting for your snare drum or something like that? Anything right. like that, I'm, I'll be more than happy to make a, a video um, explaining it. But um, of course, I can't make videos for you and what you want to see if I don't know what you want to see. So right. it's um, yeah, it, it, I, I, I genuinely do think like, like what you're saying is um, very true. Like you do need to listen to your audience for for, for anyone that is going to start making videos or, ha- or or is currently making videos. Um, 
listen to your audience and don't don't be mean to them like I, I, I take so much time to reply to every single comment I get and if you look at my YouTube channel every single comment even if it's like nice video I'll reply thank you or really appreciate it like anything it's important yeah so like I mean but back, you know, a year ago, I wasn't getting that many comments, but now I'm getting quite a few comments. And even though I'm not getting as many views, it seems like I'm getting more comments than I have views. So, like, like I spent ages on my video manager, like, scrolling past, thank you, thank you, appreciate it, you know. But, but because I I do sit there, I do read what you guys have to say, and it, 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 it makes it worthwhile knowing that people are watching it, you know. So, um, yeah, it's very important. That's a nice conclusion, I would say. Yes. Um, so we um already hitting the... 45 minutes uh, mark right now with the interview wow. um, um yeah josh um just wanted to say thank you very much for your time it was really fun uh and interesting to talk to you and i hope like the people would dig it um uh, as for everything i just like started to make those interviews um i started off with tune track now it's josh um, so what, I, I hope you guys dig this as well. Um, if you have any questions about this interview, about just check out his channel. I want to post the link to his channel in my description. Um, of course, so uh, uh, yeah, of course. I'm just going to take a photo from my Instagram. So this is this is my Instagram. So quick plug, I know it's a shameless plug. Josh Cameron Drums. Stuck it on my Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, everything. That, that, that is me, Josh Cameron Drums. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Check him out. So again, cool. uh, folks, thanks again for watching and talk to you in a few. Bye-bye. Cool. Thanks. See you later.